This is my guest, Mike Peck, and I'm going to be showing him our workshop here for a little workshop tour. So, start with, we'll just go through some of the tools. We have a Delta uh, drill press, um, have a, um, this is actually a Grizzly um, trans, uh, transit table. Um, not great, it's got quite a bit of slop in it, but it works for most of what we're doing. This here uh, is actually one of my favorite tools. It's a uh, Powermatic hollow chisel mortiser. Um, haven't got to use it a lot. I used to have a, or still do have a uh, hollow chisel mortiser attachment for the drill press. Um, didn't like that. Um, there was a lot of play in it. Hard to make really clean mortises. So. That little thing can make that big hole? Um, it, you step it, this is actually twice the size of this bit. Mm. This one that's the largest size that a drill press will take. Um, this one will actually take a one inch bit if you have it. Okay. That, wow. bit, that bit itself is about $65. Um, this is a Delta uh, 14 inch bandsaw. Um, had this quite a while. Put a Craig fence on it. Um, so that, that works. This is oh, I see that will adjust it back and forth just to run the stock through? Yeah, this adjusts back and forth. Nice. The, the only thing that I don't like about this one is um, with a bandsaw you have the drift angle so the blade doesn't cut exactly straight so you have to reset this bit every time or this this fence every time and the adjustments to do that are not very convenient on this fence huh so but it works good enough um, this is Jada's little work area <laughs> this is she uh, takes everything that's too small to use for something else and cuts it up even smaller <laughs> um, our handiwork. Um, actually, that's part of the uh, a Jalen and Colson were making Cuban cubes, and this is one that broke. Oh, okay. So, um, this is a Jet 14 inch mini, or not 14 inch. This is a Jet uh, mini lathe. Um, I put the extension on it, so it'll do. I think it's 40 inches between centers. Um, have it set up right now to turn some pins or starting to try to do that we've never really done any yet so um, gonna gonna try to turn some pins um, so that's a lot of fun a nice uh, chisel yep, set here. another chisel set here um, cool so these this right here is our uh, sharpener that we use for the for the lathe tools um, and this is a Wolverine jig that holds the tools in line so you can sharpen them. Um, over here we have our table saw. This is a 10 inch Delta Unisaw. Um, I have a Forest Woodworker 2 blade that's not in it right now. This is just kind of a general purpose blade that we use. Um, then over here in the outfeed I don't have a lot of space for a dedicated um, router table so I put a Jessam lift in the uh, in the router table or in the extension of the table saw and then I just built this um, auxiliary fence for my for my fence and put some dust collection that actually works a lot better than what I thought it would. Oh yeah, it does a great uh, job. It, it gets probably 90% of all mm -hmm. of the dust even underneath the table. Mm -hmm. Eventually I want to put a box under the table and put dust collection coming out of it. Um, then Did over here... set of switches there on the wall? Yeah. Over here I have a switch for the dust collection system, one for an air compressor, and right now there's one for the router. Um, eventually I want to put a switch on the front with for the router and a speed control for the router. Mm -hmm. um, this is a uh, a miter jig, um, like that a lot. That actually, I bought the table saw used, and that came with it. Um, so I, I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. This is a Dewalt um, 12 inch compound miter saw. Does a good job. Um, I need to get a, a better blade for it whenever you start it. The blade actually shifts just a little bit. Um, I hope it's the blade, not the machine. <laughs> so we're going to put a different blade on it and see if that takes care of you it. you got the guards and stuff for it, I'm sure. I've got the guards. Um, this actually, someone was using it 
and um, ran the, the guard into a piece of wood and it pushed it sideways, hit the blade, and ripped the mm. guard off of it. Mm. Um, I've got all the pieces, I just need to reassemble it. Mm -hmm. um, this is some wood storage uh -huh. shelves that I built. Um, these are pieces of plywood that go back on either side of the studs in the wall. Mm -hmm. um, so it just makes them some so you storage. do mostly short stuff here, it looks like. Yeah, I can do up to eight foot on the tops. Um, and then I want to put more over here on the wall uh, eventually. Mm -hmm. This is work a, in progress. This is a belt sander um, sanding station that um, I borrowed from my father-in-law without his knowledge. And he hasn't asked for it back since he doesn't know I have it. So <laughs> it's worked out pretty well. 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah, it looks like someone bought it at a garage sale. <laughs> <laughs> this is my uh, Delta 8 inch joiner. Um, I started out with a little 4 inch desktop Delta joiner. Hated it. I um, only used it a few times. Um, I guess it would work for some things, but not for any, just mm. about anything I want to do. Um, upgraded to a 6 inch joiner. I liked it, it worked fine. But so much of what I do falls in between six and eight inches that it yeah. it really became a problem. So I sold it and upgraded this one. Like it's it a lot. Very nice piece. Anything above eight inches gets into really really serious money, and so I don't see that happening mm -hmm. for a while. This is the latest thing that I bought. Um, it's a 15 inch uh, pyromatic joiner or <laughs> planer. Um, like it but I need to do some setup on it um, just learning how to set it up properly um, still getting a few lines I need to put some new blades in it and so cool but it's it's a big beefy machine mm -hmm. um, a few things over here I have a jet uh, wet grinder that I use for chisels plane irons all of those types of things um, it's done a really good job um, Part of it's just learning to use it properly. <laughs> um, just have a little plate here that I use to put sandpaper on and to flatten. Make sure it's properly things, flat. Um, all of that. Um, have an Erlex uh, HVLP that has uh, worked out pretty good, but we're once again just learning to use it really. Mm -hmm. um, takes all this stuff takes time. It's never as easy as what the mm -hmm. <laughs> videos show. Yep. So. This is a uh, cabinet that I that I bought um, actually at a used furniture store, and it's been good just for all the little parts, all those mm -hmm. types of things. I have a drawer here nice setup, yeah. that I put my uh, router bits in, so that's worked out pretty well. Um, over here, it's a fine woodworking section. I keep my uh, all my paints and solvents and things like that in here. This is a cabinet that I just um, needed more storage, put it in here until I can get some more cabinets and things like that built in the shop. What do you got here? Wow, a lot of fine stuff here. This is a workbench. Um, Jalen wanted a workbench, so we went and got some lumber and, and uh, put this together. I can take a look at that there. It's, um, this is all uh, mortise and tendon in and then with through bolts uh, so that they can be tightened later if it if it loosens up. Um, Pretty solid then. Wow. This will have a shelf across here and doors and um, all of his hand tools and things like that okay. will go up here. Um, so it's got bench dog holes in it. Um, we need to get some better bench dogs. But some of the tools that we have for the for the handwork. We just bought this um, this Wood River plane it's wow. a number four and we bought it on the way to woodworking in America and uh, Christopher Schwarz helped us take this um, out of the box basically set it up um, flatten the back of the blade sharpen it we sharpened it on wow. on uh, his uh, <coughs> Shapton stones got it all set up and took some shavings with it so mm -hmm. um, that was that was a real treat to uh, to get a work with him on that some uh, Lee Nielsen chisels that I really like. Uh, What's special about those? Well, there's a uh, couple things. One, it's really, really good steel, so it so holds it an edge. Head, holds an edge mm -hmm. for a really long time. 
And then it also has socket handles, which uh, if you just smack it, you can pull the handle out. And I have a, a longer handle for pairing and things like that that's about mm -hmm. that long. But then you just put it back in, tap uh, it, whoops, oh. then tap it. No. And then it's, mm -hmm. it's in there good. Um, this is another thing that I, that I got at uh, Woodworking in America. This is a marking knife, and these are handmade by uh, by uh, Blue Spruce. Uh, nice people. Stopped and talked to him for a while. Tried it. Uh, really liked it. So, and it's this is the small one. It's thin enough that you can get inside and okay. mark uh, mark for dovetails. That uh -huh. type of thing. Um, another. What's piece, this here? That's. Um, this is a mallet that Jalen uh, turned on the lathe. We had some oak that had been glued up. We, we, uh, I think it was actually two pieces, and we split it and glued it up into four. Okay. And he turned this on the lathe, and uh, we had a Veritas catalog down here that had a picture of one, and he just laid it out there and kept looking at it and <laughs> just wow. kind of tried to make it look good. the same, but it, uh -huh. it worked out good and it has oh, a good yeah. feel. Oh, yeah. He uh, finished it with boiled linseed oil and uh, paste wax, mm -hmm. and so that turned out really cool. Well. Another piece that we uh, we actually ordered at Woodworking in America, just um, re then received it in the mail, was this marking gauge. The nice thing about this is it has this micro adjuster, so and you, you can take a piece of yeah, wood. Yeah, show me how it works. You can take a piece of wood and just get it close. It doesn't have to be exact. You get it close, mm -hmm. tighten this back, and then you have this micro adjust to bring it in oh, wow. exact. Then you tighten you this, it in. and then you can uh, okay. use it to mark. Okay. And an additional benefit to that, like if you're cutting out pins, then you can take your chisel and on your final cut, drop it right in that line. Right exactly in the And know line. that you're dead on with that. Hmm. So, um, also, have a Rob Cosmo dovetail saw. Um, we actually took this to Woodworking in America when we went, and uh, Rob Cosman signed it to Jalen and put a little message on there for him. Um, this is a really nice dovetail saw. Um, it starts out at 22 teeth per inch for the first two inches, makes it easy to get started, and then goes to more of a traditional um, 22 or 15, 15 uh -huh. uh, tooth, teeth per inch after that uh, for more aggressive cuts. So wow. that's a, a really nice saw, plus just the uh, the connection with Rob. Oh and, yeah, and, that's uh, getting incredible. to talk to him, and he spent some time with Jalen showing him how to how to use it so mm -hmm. that was a lot of fun very nice um, what you got this, this table here is one that I, I put together the table top actually came out of an apartment that I had um, it was a a uh, kitchen table took okay. it out it's actually a the top is made out of a material that um, won't burn. I mean, you can light a fire on top of it, mm. <laughs> and it mm. won't burn. So it's a very, very durable surface. And then I just uh, built the base for it out of poplar, and then my daughter Jada actually stained it, oh, and wow. stained it up for me. It's not huh. totally done, but she comes out and plays with it every once mm. in a while. When she comes into the shop. So, hmm. um, last thing here. Um, just clamp storage. Don't have a lot of clamps yet. Um, very expensive, but I'm just trying to buy good ones when I buy them and just keep buying a little along. Um, one of the things when I was first looking at clamps, I went to Woodcraft and asked, was talking to them about them, and they suggested these jets because they have this release uh, lever here, and most of the K bodies don't have that. Hmm. And so one, when the clamp is loose, it doesn't have anything keeping it from sliding back. Okay. And because you hang them up, a lot of times you'll go and grab them, and that jaw will slam down and hit you, okay. on, the, hit you on the hands. Well, so, that's um, good. So just starting to build a, a little supply of clamps uh -huh. and get things together. So. Well, very good. Very right. nice setup. I think that's about it. Very functional. Um, and never have everything you need, but... Uh, I'm starting to get to the place where we have most of what we need to complete the mm -hmm. project. So, yep. I think that's it. And thanks, Jordan, for the camera work. All right. Thanks for showing.